This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Every time that we are working in this world, we must remember that our bodies are attached, connected, wired to a spiritual root that's who that we really are. That's those are our holy souls and those pure amazing 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 souls are trapped in physicality and it's the worst prison of them all there's nothing you can do to to escape you're trapped in your own body and you must go with your chains with your prison to every place you go the main and only basically thing that can be done is to remember who we are and not to fall in that trap of the evil inclination to fall in the imagination of physicality to become physical to think that you are physical that's our only escape way from the prison, the exile of the physical world. To remember, no, I'm not part of this hell. I'm spiritual. I'm divine. My soul is godly, is holy. I'm an eternal creation. I'm a pure, holy, amazing soul. Except of that, there's nothing we can do in this dark world to save our spirits from the filth, the darkness, the shame of this covered and blocked world, Alma de Shikra, the world of lie. This world is being called the world of lie, Alma de Shikra in the Zohar Kadosh, the book been, that had been written by Rab Shimon Bar Yochai. Is calling this world the world of lie. This world is lying to you on everything you ask him. He's a liar. You ask him who created the world, even if he's going to tell you, Bora Olam, there is a creator to the world, some, some lie is hidden between the lines here. He won't give you a direct answer. When you want a direct answer, you must ask yourself. You must go deep inside into the roots of your own soul and over there in your inner source you'll find the truth that you're asking for it's not outside you cannot find the truth outside the truth is inner when the creator created the world he created it from within he sent that beam of light to the center of emptiness of darkness and from within, he start building another layer and another layer and another layer, liar and another liar and another liar <laughs> that are blocking and shading the truth, that are hiding and covering the truth that there is nothing except of him. Because even if you will want to serve the Creator and to connect yourself to the truth, and you're going to go and ask Chachamim, wise, righteous people, holy rabbis, amazing people with life experience. So if you're going to find yourself asking a huge rabbi, and I'm talking only about righteous people, and for an example, he is Chabadnik, he will open for you the Tanya book and will give you clear evidence that you can find Hashem in the world through Tanya. Amazing. And if you'll find the breast of a Hasid, righteous man, not a sick, crazy breast level man, <laughs> a righteous man. You'll find him and you're going to ask him, show me Hashem. He will give you pure and holy and amazing evidence from Likutei Moran, the book of Ravi Nachman, and will show to you that Hashem is here with you. No problem. You're going to go and ask a Litvish, you're going to go and ask a Yemenite, a Sephardi, an Ashkenazi, a Posekador, whoever you're going to go and ask, he will bring to you an evidence from his place. From his life experience, he will bring the evidence for you that Hashem is there in his life. 
that evidence will never going to answer your inner questions completely. Because the Tanya is the book of life of Baal Tanya. And Likutei Moran are the tears and sweat and blood and effort and sorrow of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev that literally died to write that book. This is the novel of his life. This is the life story of that righteous man. This is the journey of that holy, huge, righteous pillar of fire that brought down his truth down to earth. But his path, his journey was his journey. And through his life journey, while he was going through all of his difficulties, he wrote pearls of wisdom, amazing conclusions, deep understandings about how that he found the Creator in his life. And he wants you to learn from him, not how to walk in his path, how to walk in your path, how to find your spirituality, how to find the roots of your own soul like that he did in his life. And the advice that he found for peace in the house, for example, with his wife, with his soulmate, can inspire you to find advice for your issues with your wife in your house, with your soulmate. Because your wife, she's different than Rabbi Nachman's wife. And you also a little bit, a little bit, the breath of a hair different than Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. <laughs> so there are differences between you two. So you cannot follow his footsteps completely because you're not him and you're never going to be him. And you won't be his <laughs> wife because you're not her. Different education, different nature, different life experience, different environment, different opinion, different weather, different options, different abilities, different story. So you can only learn one thing from her or from him to be inspired from them to find the truth, never to back off from the real truth, not to give up on hope. Your hope. He was hoping for one thing, you're going to hope for something else. And like that he haven't gave up, you need to learn from him not to give up on yours, on your goals, not on his dreams. He was a dreamer. He was a righteous man. He was hoping. Amazing. Thank you. We appreciate all your effort. And thank you for inspiring us to find the path, how to bring our children to the right path, how to save our families from destruction, how to save ourselves from sadness and despair and depression, how to go out from our anxious anxieties and, and, and fears and, and stress and, 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 and fears and sorrow. We need the advice to save our lives. If you will hear that all of Rabbi Nachman's wishes came true, so you'll be happy for him. If you're going to hear that your rabbi achieved what that he was hoping for, so you'll be happy for him. It won't be your salvation. You have issues with your next door neighbor and you need some answers. You need some solutions with the neighbors. Don't stop dragging chairs and, and, and tables. Okay, I hear you. You were praying on Am Israel, and I have a problem with my neighbor. I don't know. Like, great. I'm happy you've been answered, but can you help me with my neighbors? Like, your issues, your problems need to be solved. This is what it is needed for you. Redemption to your backyard, to your front lawn, to your living room, to your family, to your beloved ones, to your inner issues. So the light that's supposed to come and shine and illuminate your life is an individual light, is the answer to your individual questions. To answer and solve your inner doubts, your inner fears, not his fears, not my fears, your fears. So you must be the one to ask those questions if you want them to be answered. Because Hashem will answer your prayers. For that you must pray. For that you must pray your own prayers. Your real prayers. So you need to find out what are my prayers. What are my goals. Who am I? 
what am I supposed to do in this world? Many people are falling into that trap of becoming only religious and not truth seekers. You become religious and you think that by saying Tehilim and by waking up in the morning and davening Shacharit and saying Birkot HaShachar and even doing it in Imi, you think that all your issues will be solved. It's a lie. It doesn't work. Haven't you tried that? You did. We all did. We all went in, 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 in Shovavim and did the Tikkunim and we all woke up to Davenets and we all gave Meiser and we were all keeping Shabbat and we're all eating kosher and we're going to continue because we still do believe in that but still it doesn't answer to all of our issues. We're still crazy. We're still terrified. We still don't know what to do with our lives. Still don't know how to communicate, still don't know how to speak, still don't know how to express our emotions, still don't know how to help our beloved ones, don't know how to pray, still don't know how to learn from which book. But you heard so many lectures and you heard from other people on so many ways and so many options been open for you, but it didn't answer your questions. You know why? Because you still haven't asked your questions. You still haven't been completely honest in your journey with your Creator, with the Creator. You haven't created yet a channel of communication with your Redeemer, with your Savior, with your God, with your faith, based on your faith and belief. Because you still have not found yourself you still don't know who you are, so how can you succeed? If you still don't know who you are, how are you even going to ask for the right way? You don't know your location. You know where you want to get. Okay, great, but you, where from? Where you want to go from? The address is over there. Yes, you need to make it to there. Jerusalem, Ira Kodesh, the holy city, the, the, the western wall, Beit HaMikdash, Redemption Day, Wonderful. Where from? No one can tell you go right and then left. No one can, can give you the route. No one can give you the, 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 the orders how to get there. We need to know where you are. Right? For one person, he needs to take 70 rights, 30 lefts, and then he'll be there. Someone else needs to make a total different amount of rights and total different amount of lefts. And, and, and only because their location, their starting point is different. You need to be aware to who that you are and to what you're asking for and where are you standing. So for that, you need to be who that you are. You must allow yourself to be who that you are. You must understand who you are. You are not your body. That's the first thing. You are not the physical body that is covering you. You are not the color of your eyes. You're not the shape and figure of your face. You're not your nose. You're not your eyes. You're not your eyebrows. You're not your hair. You're not your shaitel, that's for sure. <laughs> you're not. You are not your coverings. You are not your vehicle. You are not your vehicle. The driver, the rider, is not his horse. He's the rider. He's the driver. He's not the car. When you take decisions, you take them with your mind. When you feel some feelings, you feel them with your heart. Not with your hands, not with your back, not with your chest, not with your, not with your brain even. It's inside. And even if you're going to put your finger, you know that the Nazis, they were cutting Jews to slices, like cold cuts they were cutting us, to find the difference between Jewish to other nations. They made all the tests that they could to find what is making those, that species, different than others. 
because they couldn't understand how you can put a whole family in front of gas chambers and the father is guiding his children how to say Shema and how to die on Kiddush Hashem and how not to be scared and the mother she's standing and praying. They couldn't understand that. How a rabbi in front of the gas chambers is telling his students not to be arrogant on the huge privilege that fell in their share to die for the Creator. Nazi officers lost their minds seeing those things. Who are you? What are you doing? What do you mean? You're not scared. You're not afraid. Willing to die. Happy to be sacrificed. Sick. How come? Why? What's so different? So they tried the nose and it's not the nose. They tried the heart, and it's not the heart. They dissect the brain, it's not the brain. Everything is the same. All human beings are the same. Physically, the same. No differences in the cells, in the organisms. Nothing different. Inside my people, Hashem is saying, I live inside of you. I live inside of you. Where? Inside. And if you put your finger in the most inner point of the person, you won't find it. It's inner. It's deeper. It's above physicality. It's beyond the place. It's spiritual. It doesn't have no holding in, spirit, in, in physicality. You cannot hold it. You cannot grab it. This is why also, when you understand something about your soul, when you understand something about wisdom, about your life, one minute later, you lose it. You don't know where it is. Where is my inspiration? Where is my thought? Where is my love to Hashem? Where is my excitement to serve? Where is it? Where did it went? It's higher today than it was yesterday. Because it's inner. Because always when you understand something, Hashem wants you to understand something else, something higher, more. That you will get deeper and deeper and higher and higher. And it's an endless journey that we're never going to finish. Because our share is the share in the world to come that is an eternal life, eternal time, above time, eternal world. A place that is above time. Spiritual development that will never end. And that is our journey even now when we are trapped in physicality. So now you cannot see how spiritual you are, but you must believe. That's your only hope. To believe in it and when you need to believe in the hours of darkness. In the times of despair and sadness and and. and, and and, and difficulties that are above your ability to stand. That's when you need to throw yourself to the water. That's when you need to say, I believe. That's when you need to say, but I'm going to make it. When there are no chances and no options, then you should believe. Then you should call the Creator and you should scream your guts out. And you should stand like a pillar of fire with no fear in your eyes. And to confront your fears and to fight against your enemies, your spiritual, the demons that are attacking your thoughts, your fears, your anxiety, your nightmares, your humiliations. And not to be afraid to be humiliated. Not to be afraid to be scared and to stand in front of your worst fears and to say, I'm not belong to this world. I'm a holy soul. I'm not from this world at all. I'm a holy, eternal child of the Creator. And I'm here in a mission, on a mission. I'm here to give some work, to bring some results, not to give up. Always to pray, to illuminate the world, to keep up, to be positive, to strengthen others, whatever you do in your life. If that's who the light of your soul is telling you that you are, so be that one that you are. And don't give up on your dreams no matter how many failures you experienced, how many times you fell on your face, no matter how many times you messed up in the worst 
way of them all. There is nothing else to do except of giving yourself another chance and another chance and another chance and never ever to back off of being truthful to who that you are. To go all the way with the flaming fire of your soul and to go and to wash this world from all of its filth, from all of its lies. And even a small amount of light can illuminate huge amounts of darkness. One candle is a lifeline in the darkness. One word can save a life of a person. One verse that you read can save your life. One mitzvah, one good thought, one positive thought can save a life, can save lives of thousands. One crazy rabbi like me that is not even a qualified rabbi can save this world from its darkness and from rabbis of lie that are filling this world with scams and bribes and lies. One crazy person, and you can be that one. It doesn't have to be me. Please, like I'm begging. Give me a hand. I need your help. Yes, I need your help. We need to stand up for each other and not to be scared and not to be afraid. And if you're scared, do what the King David was doing. Stand and say to Hashem, I'm scared, I'm afraid, I don't know what to do. Please save me, please protect me, save my life. I'm terrified, I'm lost, I don't know what to do. Please heal me, please save me, please protect me, please hide me, I need to hide. Please, that's what you should do. It's the most honest thing to do when you're scared. Deal with your fears. Pray to Hashem for redemption, for salvation, for completion that He will bring you to the next step, that He will heal you, that He will provide the answer. A few days ago, my wife asked me, she told me I want to do something today, and it was in the middle of a conversation, and then we spoke about some other thing, and, I, and then we spoke about another thing, and I remembered the third one, the second one was not important, <laughs> and unfortunately, the first one that she said first that she wanted to do something in that day was not important enough to me, unfortunately, the truth. And I went after the third thing that was important to me, and I clearly remembered it well, to do my one hour in Bodhidut. And while I'm walking in the field doing my noble one hour in Bodhidut, suddenly I remember that my wife told me that she wants to do something, but I couldn't remember what was that. And I realized that I am self-centered, that I'm busy with myself. Because the second thing was really not so important, was just part of the conversation. The third thing that was so important to me, clearly I remembered. And the first tiny thing that she said disappeared from my mind, and I couldn't remember. I stopped my Dvodadut, and I said to Hashem, listen, to ask her, what was that thing that you told me that you want to do, is enough to embarrass her, and to show to her that I didn't listen. And I didn't listen. I'm not going to hide the fact that I didn't listen, but I want to find the answer. I want to remember, because I don't remember. Because the truth is that it was not important enough to me while she was talking. So I'm not doing anything until you're going to remind me what was that thing. And I was praying and praying and praying for long, long minutes. Something like 10 minutes I was asking and trying. And I went into that conversation. I investigated my own broken memory. How can... I, I, I remind myself what we were discussing, what happened before, when I came to the room, when she came to the... I tried. And after something like 10 minutes, 15 minutes of prayer, and focusing only on that subject, I found the answer. And then I texted her, and I told her, I remember that you told me that you want to do this and that, and I want us to do it right after my Bodhidut. Right after I'm going to finish my Bodhidut. And we did. And for me, it was such an important lesson that sometimes you think that there are things that are impossible for you. You don't remember. There was a prophet named Daniel. 
Daniel was a prophet that stand in a test that is impossible to stand in. When Yosef, the righteous man, Yosef at Sadiq, was a, was a prisoner in, in prison, we saw that he had the ability to interpret the dreams of the ministers of Pharaoh. And when in the end he had to stand in front of Pharaoh, he interpreted his dream as well. Daniel the prophet had a harder mission even than Yosef. What was his mission? The king dreamt a dream and he was terrified from that dream. And when he woke up, he couldn't remember the dream. And then he said, he called all of the, 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 the magicians and all of his wise people and everyone. And he told everyone a decree. He said, I need one of you to remind me of my dream and to interpret it, interpret it properly. <laughs> what? How? What do you want? Tell us the dream. Hopefully we're going to find an answer. You don't give us a dream. How are we going to interpret your dream? How are we going to remember your dream? How are we going to know it? What Daniel did, he took himself to his chamber, to his room. And for three days and three nights, he didn't eat and didn't drink. And he was praying to his God. And after three days, he received in a vision a clear video HD of the king's dream. Full screen. And he came with the right interpretation. Because there is nothing that is impossible for the Creator to do. Now if you understand that you are connected to the Almighty, so He can do anything for you. Everything that needs to be done. Now what needs to be done and what not. If you believe that Hashem is good, so every good thing that you want to do, you will find the power and the right advice how to do it, and you're going to make it if you're not going to back off. If you believe in Hashem, everything, everything, even to do tshuva, even to do tshuva, be'emet, truly do tshuva, really, not to become fake religious, really to fix yourself, really to become righteous, really to care, really to love, really to feel, really to hope, really to be strong, to be a real strong person, really to care. You can become one. You can become righteous. The light of your soul is a holy light, is the godly light of good. Those holy desires that you know that you have inside, that flaming fire of hope that is still burning inside of you and dragging you from one life experience to the next and to drag yourself out of bed and out of depression and out of bad habits and out of all kinds of, 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 of despair and darkness of this world of light is a flame that is actually a channel to the sea of souls, to the endless world of above. You can deliver the message from the world to come to this world if you will believe with all your power that the Creator wants it to happen. We don't have faith in the Creator. That's our problem. We don't understand who He is, how good and great He is. We don't get it. We are being blocked by the difficulties of this world, by the horrible decrees and judgments, by the husks and coverings of physicality, and we interpret it in a wrong and bent and twisted way to think that Hashem is angry, that Hashem is upset, that Hashem gave up on us, that Hashem doesn't love us, that Hashem doesn't care, that Hashem doesn't listen. What's that? Is that faith? That's your faith. Excuse me. That's your faith. 
That's your faith. Hashem doesn't love me. Hashem doesn't listen to my prayers. Hashem doesn't follow my decrees. When I'm blessing, Hashem doesn't do. Hashem doesn't hear me. I'm praying for years. Hashem doesn't help. I'm giving my maiser. It doesn't work. I'm keeping Shabbat. It doesn't help. I'm eating kasher. I'm still crazy. <laughs> Everything is lost and I'm confused. Probably been left behind. No one cares about me. Egocentric, self-centered, depressed, broken child you are with no faith. Say the truth. So now go to Hashem and tell Him, listen, probably I've been fed for years in Lashon Ara about you because if that's you, why am I serving you? I wouldn't serve someone that doesn't care about me, someone that doesn't love me, someone that doesn't listen to my prayers, someone that couldn't care less about me, someone that thinks that I'm disgusting, that I'm so horrible, pathetic, low life. I wouldn't serve Him. So if I still choose to serve him, so it means that something inside of me is telling me that he is not that horrible person that we just described. But someone fed us with those lies about him. Someone. Someone's fed us with lies on lies on the Creator and separated us from our Father in Heaven. Told us that he's upset on us, that he's gonna punish us, that he's gonna do this and that. And why did you do that? And blaming and criticizing and slaughtering our gentle souls while we're sitting and hoping for salvation, yearning for happiness and satisfaction. Hoping for salvation, being disgraced and humiliated. And even by leaders of our generation, unfortunately. And even by big rabbis that still walks between us today. You may be afraid of them. I couldn't care less. I don't count no one because I don't work for no one. I'm serving the one that gave me life. I don't work for rabbis and I don't work for communities and I'm not afraid of no one and if I choose to respect my wife it's because I want to, not because I'm scared that she will scream or be upset or sad. Because I love her. If I choose to keep Torah and Mitzvot it's because I want to. I'm not afraid. I don't care if I'll have a share in the world to come or not. Can someone decide if I'll have or not? Can someone take it? This rabbi or that rabbi? Someone can choose what will happen with me in the world to come. Is it a joke? There is a creator and he knows my heart. He knows my kidneys. He knows my mind. He knows my desires. And if he's not, so who am I serving? I'm serving the one that I know that created this world to reveal his endless love, his infinity, his loving kindness. His unconditional, pure love of truth to all of His creation. He's trying. He's creating. Everyone are trying. We're trying. We're trying. We're all trying to reconnect. Even Facebook is trying to reconnect. We're trying to reconnect to the truth. Really, try to reconnect yourselves to the truth to the truth of your creation, to who that you are. As a child, as an innocent child, you had a simple faith in someone that loves you, that he's just behind the wall, that he's hidden, but right in front of your eyes, that he's over there somewhere, that he's with you. You had that simple faith, so go with that. I tell you, go with that. Go with that. Go with your confidence. Go with your intuition. Go with your holy desire to break the lie of this world. One person is needed. One person is required. One. One. To break and melt the ice that is separating us from the truth. One person. It can be you. It can be you. It can be you. It can be me. It can be my wife, it can be one of my children, it can be you, it can be you. It can be any one of us. All of us, we need to help each other and to help ourselves. For that you must appreciate and understand yourself, love yourself and accept yourself and admire your efforts. 
on the fact that you have not given up yet, that you still want to do. And if you don't know how to, it's not your fault. You cannot blame yourself on the horrible education that you received in your house or in your school. You cannot blame yourself on the bad company that was surrounding you from day first. You cannot. You cannot blame yourself on the weakness of your body or the weakness of your mind. You cannot blame yourself on being sensitive or sad or broken. You can just try to give yourself another chance to try to reconnect yourself to Hashem. Which Hashem? The one that's been described by Rabbi whatever? Or by that one that's been described by Rabbi whoever? No. By the real one. Maybe you found truth in the speech of that Rabbi. Great. If that truth fit to your belief system and you found his words inspiring the truth, building your inner structure to be a strong believer, not to lose your hope, follow that advice because you found it good, because you found it helpful. But if you found his advice bitter, and poison for your life, and breaking your self-esteem, and destroying your family's happiness and joy. So listen, take few steps back and reroute yourself. Breathe. Try to check what's going on here. Many, many good things been given in the hands of the evil inclination. Many, many holy books fell into the trap of the devil. Many, many rabbis today in this generation doesn't know what they're doing. The horrible consequences of their speeches don't understand how much damage they're causing with their criticism and their anger. With their lack of love and appreciation to the holy souls that are sitting in the public. That they don't realize how holy are the children of the Almighty. That they don't understand that they need to be embarrassed and do tshuva before they open their mouths in front of the children of God. And they think to themselves that they're so learner and talented and gifted and blessed. I want to see what that blessed rabbi would do without his wife two weeks before of Pesach. <laughs> what would he do? What would he do? I want to see him cleaning for Pesach. Yes, between the cracks, disqualifying, cancelling the taste from the from from the from the marble in the kitchen, covering and changing and burning and putting in hot water and then in cold water. I want to see him. I want to see him breaking his fingernails before of Pesach. Three days and three nights. Doesn't go out from the kitchen and living room and all the drawers and emptying the pockets for oh, he, 10 children he wanted. 18 for Hashem, right? Yeah, I want to see him running to this gmach and that gmach. I want to see him making sure to have the matzot and making sure to cook and inviting guests. Of so, of course, the big rabbi, he must have guests. Love and how to show affection and how always to be by her side when she needs you and how to care and remember her needs. If you're such a righteous man, you might be rewarded on inspiring her and giving her so much power to overpower all of her weaknesses and run forever. Great. What, what? Great. I never met you, though. I never met a person like that. Unfortunately. And I've been close to very big righteous people. I haven't met yet. I don't say that there's no. There are no. But I just haven't met none. If you a source of life that will connect you to life itself, to life of all life, to source of life, to Hashem, to the Creator, to your Creator, to the one that created you, that you're His child. You need to connect yourself to Him. So for that you must find yourself. So to find yourself, it's not that hard. You just need to be brave and to go with your 
inner feelings and your inner thoughts. You must count on your wisdom. You must count on your thoughts. You cannot disqualify your thoughts. You cannot criticize every thought of hope that you have. You cannot kill yourself with your own hands and depression and negativity because that other people choose to go wrong, to go bad. You must stay positive and good. And not only for yourself. When you judge someone else, someone else, you gave your friend hope and another chance in life, by that you gave them the power to give themselves another chance to continue and not to give up. When you give a chance to someone, that person receives a chance from heaven. He receives the power to continue. And when you criticize and slaughter and kill in your thoughts, you're closing doors. You're making this world darker and thicker and harder. But when you open up yourself and you give chance to your soul, to the light of goodness that f finds his way from within to be expressed out to this world, by that you're channeling the Creator to this creation. And you're opening doors to the light of, of Hashem, for the light of Hashem to illuminate other houses and to shine to the souls of other people. And it's in our power. It's in your power. Leave me aside. It's in your power, in your power, in your power, in your power. To let Hashem in. And when Hashem is in, you know what Hashem can do. He doesn't need help. He just needs us to open a crack. So we should always try to open that crack. And one moment will come that He will find His way in. And when He will find His way in, all the rest is history. All the darkness will disappear, vanish from this world. Death will disappear from the world. No more sickness. Give yourself a chance. Be positive. Express your true emotions and feelings. And if you will be hurt, express your pain. And tell your thoughts. And if you don't have no one to tell, talk with yourself about your sorrow. Talk with the Creator about your sorrow, about your feelings. Share your honest, pure thoughts and emotions. It's the light of your soul. Give your honesty a chance. Be who that you are. Go and spread the light that has been given and treasured inside of you to everyone that is willing to receive from you. And be. Just be who that you are. I tell you, you're fantastic. And I'm fantastic too. Just like you. Just like you. I'm allowing the light of my soul to speak from my mouth. And for years I was scared. And when you'll be able to open your mouth, you will see diamonds and pearls and good stones, rubies and gold and, and sparks will come out from your mouth. And your hug will heal. And your words will heal. And when you're going <coughs> to pat your child, he will get stronger. And you will give an advice to a person. And he will find it inspiring. And when you're going to learn, your learning will go and wake up the world. And when you will pray, people will have blessings. Because you will be connected to a source of energy that now you're disconnected from. Because you don't believe in yourself. Because you're not reconnecting yourself. Okay? Turn on your Wi-Fi and go spread Emunah in the world. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit Emunah.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.